Back at it on a Thursday afternoon. Kelly Gramlich joins us here. And, and Kelly, we talked about the offense earlier, but from the other side of the football, I think a lot of people look back to the Ohio State game and uh, the way that offense was able to really move the ball against Clemson in the second quarter and take control. You go back to the national championship game against LSU, and people say, man, on the biggest stage in these biggest ball games, Brent Venable's group hasn't shown up. Do you think that's something that he's taken personally this year, kind of hearing that? I mean, I, 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 I'm I, sure he's not locked in every day to what's going on, you know, the the ancillary noise from the outside, but you can't help but notice the way that defense has looked in a couple of their marquee matchups as of late, and this would present uh, quite a challenge again, I think, for them defensively against this Georgia offense. It does, and I'm not as worried about the defense. I think you can look back at the last couple of years With LSU, I know Clemson fans might not want to hear it, but that LSU offense was just special. Very, Especially down the stretch, very few defenses were able to slow them down. So I think you got to give LSU a ton of credit in that 2019 game. And then last year, Justin Fields played really well. Trey Sermon was a monster. But I think there are a bunch of other factors as well. You have Skowski ejected for targeting. Skowski wasn't healthy for basically the entire season. That defense was so injured last year. When I think back to the Notre Dame game in South Bend, when Clemson's trying to get a stop on that two-point conversion in overtime, and you've got guys in there playing linebacker and playing in the secondary that I've never heard of. And I cover (laughs) this team every day. You know, So the injuries really piled up. And I used to always say this on the pregame show with Scott Reimer. Clemson has had incredible injury luck under Dabo Sweeney. I think some of that caught up to them last year as the defense was beat up throughout the year. Tyler Davis was beat up. Xavier Thomas barely played. I mean, you look at all the injury issues they had. So I really am pretty high on this defense. If they can stay healthy and just continue to be healthier throughout the year, I think the D line is going to be nasty. I think the secondary is very experienced and it's going to be. And and to me, one of the biggest keys is Skalski. People like to undervalue Skalski and, you know, talk about him in, in somewhat negative ways. But I think he's the quarterback. He's the leader. He's the voice. And if he's out there, yeah, he's not going to make every single play. He's not the most athletic guy you've seen. But he plays that Ben Bolware role, and you need him on the field. So one of the biggest keys for me is Skalski staying healthy. You know, his hit that took him out of the game and injured Justin Fields, that would have been a fourth down if that's a regular, you know, if he gets his helmet (laughs) around. I mean, and that you miss that field goal, and all of a sudden it's a seven-point game instead of a 10-point game or whatever went on to be 14 and then 21. So, I mean, that was a huge moment, probably a bigger moment than we give it credit for when you look back on it. And uh, that's just got to be something that's just, uh, you know, chomp, he's chomping at the bit to correct because two years in a row in the college football playoff, like you said, the quarterback for this Clemson Tiger team has uh, been taken out of the game because of uh, a, a, a targeting penalty, which has just got to be so frustrating given the fact that I don't think he's a dirty player, right? I mean, it, it's just the nature of what's happened a couple of times for him. Bad form. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I don't think Skowski's a dirty player. I don't. And you know, you can look back in the in Clemson's win in 2016, even in 2015. Seriously, imagine the same thing happening. Imagine Ben Bulware being ejected for targeting in the first half of one of those games. Yeah. How would things have gone? I, I think that it is an easy way to talk about Clemson's defense and say, well, they've lost a step. You know, Venables can't be this good forever, all these things. But I think you have to look at the overall picture and look at the context and just look at how injured – this defense was last year. So I'm expecting a lot from this defense. They really, it's not a point of concern for me. I think the Fred Davis stuff is a little bit of a concern depth in the the corner spot, but look, that's something we talk about every year. So you just got to get used to that, but I'm, I'm really high on this defense. Lawton. Man, they got to put something together early. That matchup with Georgia would not be a joke, but that's not the only big matchup, Kelly, as you know, with your work that you do with the ACC Network and spending time hanging out with uh, the guys over at Packer and Durham and all the shows that you do. There's a lot of other big games out there. Do you give Miami any chance to make this game against Alabama competitive? Because I I think personally for the ACC's, from the ACC's perspective, if that game is competitive, it definitely helps the narrative that this league is right now on the come up because it's been really Clemson and everybody else for a while. 
Yeah, it definitely helps. You've got the Clemson Georgia game, you've got Miami Alabama, and you've got Louisville Ole Miss. So three really important games in that first weekend for the ACC's reputation. I think Miami's going to cover. I, I don't have Miami winning the game. I don't think they've proven to me or anyone that they can win games like this. But from what we're hearing from Alabama, I actually heard a Greg McElroy quote recently where the offense has really struggled in camp. And the, the defense has been great, which you see that with a lot of programs at this point. But the offense just hasn't really hit its stride. Will Bama's offense improve throughout the year? I think so. Because yeah. they have such great recruits and these guys are going to grow up and you're going to learn more names than just John Mechie, but they don't have those proven commodities off the jump. I think you're going to see more of an uglier game between Alabama and Miami. The key really is if De'Ara King, which he is healthy from what we've heard, if Miami can score points. So I think Miami is going to cover the 19. I would take Miami plus 19 right now, but I am in no way guaranteeing a Miami victory, but I think that game's going to be, a little uglier, a little lower scoring, and look like Alabama is truly replacing all their weapons like they are. Well, and, and Bryce Young there at quarterback is sort of an interesting dynamic because we see that across the country. C.J. Stroud at Ohio State, D.J. Uyunglele at Clemson. I mean, these guys that are really getting their first opportunities to shine. It's it's funny to me because it, it, you look at Spencer Rattler, who felt brand new a year ago, and go, hey, there's the KG veteran in college football when it comes to you know star quarterbacks at this point. It, it's just a weird situation that these power programs like Ohio State, Clemson, and Alabama are all facing this type of adversity uh, if you want to call it that you know but you're getting mm -hmm. out there a new quarterback it's always a, a change of pace you just don't know how it'll go and if Bryce Young were to throw say a Tua Tunga Viola pick six like he did in the national championship against Clemson on one of the opening plays against Miami you know, where is he in between his ears the rest of that ball game I think it's a question people don't know the answer to at this point Right. I agree. And I, I, Bryce Young is talented, of course. There's no doubt about that. But he wasn't able to establish himself as a leader of this team at all last year. I mean, that was completely Mac Jones's team, yeah. and rightfully so. But last year, DJU had that chance. He had that chance against Notre Dame and Boston College. Yeah. And of course, he's still working on those leadership skills. We've heard those quotes from Tony Elliott and others in, in fall camp. But he's had a chance to go out there, start a game, command the huddle, make big plays under the bright light. Bryce Young just hasn't had that chance in a college uniform yet. And, you know, same thing with C.J. Stroud. C.J. Ohio State opens with an easier game, uh, but then they play Oregon early. So that's going to be a really fun matchup. But C.J. Stroud has proven weapons. He has Olave. He has Garrett Wilson. He has Master Teague. He has these dudes. And, again, Bama has four and five stars all over that offense, but they're not proven. So I think Stroud is going to have more of those um, that that safety valve that he can rely on with those wide receivers. And I know Bryce Young has John Mechie, but beyond that, I think there's a lot of questions. That's a great point, Kelly. We'll hit a quick break. Stay with us. Radio, only on iHeartRadio. The world is upside down and millions of Americans